Okay. So, uh, first of all, let me to uh, review the previous lecture briefly, okay? What was the previous lecture? Cartilage. And uh, hopefully you remember, or maybe you have read the appropriate topics uh, in the textbook. So, how many types of cartilage we have? Three main types. So, if what are the main differences between these cartilage types? First of all, matrix. How the uh, what are the di main differences in the matrix? For example, what type of type of collagen in hyaline cartilage. Do you remember? Type 2. Okay. What about the elastic cartilage? Plus elastic fibers. And what about the um, fibro cartilage? Type 1 and type 2. So, do you agree with your friend? Is it correct? Type 1 and type 2? Type 1 and type 2, both of them. Besides, what is the difference between the, um, these cartilages? For example, from point of view of perichondrium, what is perichondrium? Do you know? Wait, perichondrium. What is perichondrium? Mm -hmm. Connective tissue. What for the perichondrium is usually is? Provide food and oxygen. Why food and oxygen is provided by the perichondrium? Because cartilage is fully vascular, no blood uh, vessels are identifiable in the cartilage. That is why the perichondrium is highly uh, vascularized. And how the, for example, uh, this different type of uh, nutrients reach the cartilage cell? Okay, mesenchyme provide the blood vessels, provide the blood, which is enriched with the oxygen, nutrients. How these nutrients are able to reach cartilage cells in the cartilage tissue? Why a diffusion? First of all, they are uh, moving into the why the hydrostatic pressure into the interstitial fluid. And from interstitial fluid, via the diffusion, it moves into the different surrounding tissues. Cartilage tissue is one of them. But uh, how, for example, um, okay, uh, beside the uh, blood vessels, what is another function of uh, perichondrium? Another function of perichondrium. So look, I will show you the perichondrium. Wait, 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 one minute, please. Look, for example, this image. Okay, so this is, what is this? Cartilage tissue, what type of cartilage is this? Hyaline cartilage, yes? And these are layers of perichondrium. So usually layers of perichondrium contains the mesenchymal-like cells. 
what is function of perichondrium beside this blood supply. Source of chondroblasts, new cartilage cells. Plus, when the new cartilage cells are produced, it means that the new layers of cartilage is also originated. But tell me please, what type of growth, so growth is provided by the perichondrium. What about the type of cartilage where we have no perichondrium at all? For example, fibrocartilage. So what is the main source of new cells in fibrocartilage? Fibroblasts. Do you know why fibroblasts exist in the cartilage, for example, in fibrocartilage? To produce the matrix. So actu actually the fibrocartilage is mix of hyaline cartilage tissue and dense connective tissue. So fibers, I mean, Cartilage, uh, collagen fibers, type 1, that is why collagen fibers type 1 are identifiable in the fibrocartilage. And beside the collagen type 1, we can identify their fibroblast cells. So fibroblast cells are able to proliferate when the need exists. For example, in the case of cartilage repair or cartilage growth, and they form new cartilage cells, okay? Chondroblasts. So chondroblast is then synthesized, start to synthesize collagen type 2 or elastin fibers in the case of elastic cartilage and they became finally cartilage cells or chondrocytes. So uh, what is the main difference between the, look, this is extracellular matrix and these are cartilage cells. So what is this dark line? dark line is part of cartilage matrix which contains less amount of collagen fibers. Yes? But this part, which is much more light stain, in con it contains more amount of collagen fiber. So this layer is called territorial matrix and this one is interterritorial matrix. How we call these places in extracellular matrix where the collagen uh, cartilage cells usually reside? This places, look, lacunae. One lacuna, plural lacunae, okay? So, why these cells, cartilage cells, some cartilage cells are well stained, I mean fully stained, look, and some of them contain this white part, white material. No, they are not fully stained. Maybe you remember this, I have explained why it happens usually. This is due to the tissue processing. The cells are not well preserved. They shrink, and usually they shrink in this case, and this, uh, they are actually detached from the um, wall of lacuna. Look here, and this is free, not stained space. 
between the cell and wall of lacuna. So, regarding the elastic cartilage. In the case of elastic cartilage, we have the uh, what? Collagen fibers, and we have there also the elastic fibers. Perichondrium is also identifiable in elastic cartilage, but not in the fibrocartilage. Once again, what type of cartilage is this? Hyaline cartilage. What you see here, this is dense connective tissue. This one, dense connective tissue. Here is perichondrium. This is growing cartilage. And this is cartilage itself, differentiated cartilage. This is growing cartilage, which contains differentiating cells, I mean chondroblast cells, and or precursors of chondroblast cells, which are mesenchymal cells. And here is the perichondrium itself, which contains mesenchymal cells. Okay, so uh, when you see, for example, in the cartilage tissue, such type of groups, isogenous groups, which contains several uh, cells. What does it mean? It means that these cells which are allocated in this group are able to divide. To divide. So this one is not more divided, this one, and after they divide, they are um, in the growing cartilage, for example, they step by step are separated by the uh, extracellular matrix, which is produced by these chondrocyte cells, uh, cartilage cells. And uh, step by step, they are arranged at the quite significant distance between basic staining, and uh, not, not only eosinophilic staining is two here, but the, uh, the small portion of cytoplasm is not so well stained as other part, for example. So um, What is depicted here? What is this? Extracellular matrix. These are collagen fibers. And this small fragment is magnified here. And it contains a fragment of collagen fiber itself. And attached to this collagen fibers is what type of macromolecule is this? Which one? Proteoglycan. Yes, proteoglycan, which contains core protein, link protein, and small chains of glycosoaminoglycans. Mainly in the cartilage, we can identify the chondroitin sulfate glycosoaminoglycan. Oh, maybe you remember what is depicted on this slide. What type of cartilage? Which one? So this is hyaline cartilage, which is represented in the synovial joints. On the surface, look, on the surface of 
bones, look this one or that one. And this is, it is called articular cartilage, and this articular cartilage has no perichondrium at all. So how the cells of this hyaline cartilage are able to obtain the nutrients. From the synovial cavity, which is filled with the synovial fluid. So, but how? How it is possible? Why a diffusion, only diffusion moves here, is the main drive. Look, what is depicted here? So this is small, this is articular cartilage. Small part is magnified here. And you see collagen fibers, which are arranged in a such a way. So they are dome shaped and plus they are able, via this arrangement, they form mechanical spring-like structure. And when the force is applied to the synovial joint, this cartilage undergoes suppression, and the fluid from the cartilage tissue is drained outside into the synovial fluid. Here, it mixes with the synovial fluid. Synovial fluid itself is derived from the cells and tissues which lines the inner wall of synovial capsule and the oxygen, different type of nutrients are delivered into the synovial fluid. When the force is removed, what, what has happened during the regular movement, you know, walking or... So, in this case, when the force is removed, the cartilage uh, restores its uh, 3D shape and the fluid drains back into the cartilage and brings the oxygen and nutrients into the articular cartilage, okay? So this is the main source via which the articular cartilage, hyaline cartilage in the synovial joints is able to obtain the nutrients and oxygen. And of course release the waste products and carbon dioxide. So uh, besides the, okay, what we have here, Young active chondrocyte. What does it mean, young active chondrocyte? It means that chondrocyte is able to synthesize the extracellular matrix, collagen fibers, and you can see the difference between the territorial and interterritorial matrix here clearly. Look, less amount of collagen fibers here and quite big amount in the interterritorial matrix. But these dark <coughs> dots, they are glycosoaminoglycans. So elastic cartilage with the cells. And what is this? Elastic fibers. So this black stain, dark stain are elastic fibers. The same is here too, sorry. Look, these fibers are elastic fibers. Cells, nuclei, some cells are again well preserved, some of them not. What type of cartilage is this? fibrocartilage. And here you can see this cells, chondrocytes. You can see the uh, isogenous groups of chondrocytes 
look this, but plus you can identify here the connective tissue to collagen fibers. Look quite big amount of collagen fibers. And this is mix of collagen type 1 and type 2. What are these cells? Cells of cartilage cells or chondrocytes of fibrocartilage, they are arranged in a little bit different manner and they do not give rise to these groups of cells. They are arranged in line, usually. And what are indicated with the arrows? Fibroblast cells. Fibroblasts with an elongated nuclei. Why? Because we have here connective tissue too. And finally, how the cartilage is formed, differentiated. Which type of embryonic tissue forms cartilage? Mesenchymal tissue. This mesenchymal tissue is derived from the mesoderm, usually. And the mesenchymal cells Look, mesenchymal cells, they proliferate very intensively. In the mesenchyme tissue, they have such type of shapes. Then these processes are uh, fully disappeared. Cells became round-shaped structures. And when they start to produce collagen type 2, they, they start to transform into the chondrocytes. And you see how they are separated from each other by this interterritorial matrix. Here some of them proliferate and form this isogenous group. If they proliferate in a little bit later stages of development, when the cartilage um, extracellular matrix is already formed, so they are not able to separate from each other. Because this cartilage matrix is quite solid, but usually they proliferate during the um, formation of cartilage, during the growing growth of uh, uh, human, um, and, uh, human body, and uh, that is why they are separated from each other by this um, extracellular matrix. And so you see here, these are fibrocartilage samples. Look, this one or that one. And usually arrangement of the cell, uh, via the arrangement of the cells, we are able to identify type of cartilage. This is hyaline cartilage. And you know, when the uh, special staining for elastic fibers is not used, it is not easy to differentiate hyaline cartilage from for example, the elastic cartilage. If you, of course, uh, when you know from which part of body you can, you obtain this tissue sample, in this case, everything is okay because each type of cartilage has its own location. And this everything is depicted on the first slide of our presentation. Look. So the blue one are locations of hyaline cartilage, blue stained. So the red stained is fibrocartilage and purple stained is elastic cartilage. Look, elastic cartilage in the in the ear 
external ear and the blue one are hyaline cartilage which are identifiable in the different parts of human body, mainly in the synovial joints and also costal cartilage is hyaline cartilage and the fibrocartilage is mainly represented at the middle line of the human body for example in the pubic symphysis and between the vertebrae, intervertebral discs they contain fibrocartilage. Okay so this is the brief overview of cartilage. Now I have to start the bone but unfortunately my presentation does not work here. I don't know, not only here, you can also not open, yes, these images. I don't know why. Uh, that is why I will use the histology guide uh, images and why these images uh, explain you this new material. I mean, uh, bo so bone tissue. So bone tissue is one more specialized type of connective tissue and you know very well, you understand very well wha how significant the bone tissue is uh, because it forms a uh, different type of, uh, f first of all it shapes the body plus gives rise to the different, um, uh, how to say, uh, structures which prevent different type of organs for uh, damage. First of, uh, first of all, for example, skull bones uh, and thorac uh, thoracic bones. So the content and structure of uh, bone tissue is different, of course, and the Look. So the um, cells, extracellular matrix are fully different. Despite the uh, bone tissue is quite solid type of tissue, this tissue is highly dynamic. So how this tissue is structured, we will uh, describe in the next part of my lecture, okay? Now break, 10 minutes, 10 minutes.
So, unfortunately, I can't open my presentation and demonstrate you the full uh, uh, set of images which I have prepared for lecture, but that is why I will use another um, web page which is Lumen Histology and via this web page start to explain the content and structure of the bone tissue. So you have studied in anatomy different type of bones and you have to know the main types of the bones. I mean bone which is long, long bones, short bones, and flat bones, yes? So their internal structure differs from each other by the uh, amount of compact bone and cancellous bone. Do you know what is the difference between the compact and cancellous bone? So compact bone is actually represented by the layers of bone tissue. And this type of bone is usually, look, it looks like this one. I want to, oh, if I can to demonstrate this, look. This is cancellous bone, oh, sorry, compact bone. But another type of the bone, which is cancellous bone, it is identifiable in long bones, and it actually contains this um, meshwork of f thin bone uh, spicule-like structures, you know? So this, it is identifiable. I don't know if they have this, or maybe they have higher power of ground compact bone. Look, this is ground compact bone, and maybe the cancellous bones are also visible here low power bone, uh, low power bone or cross, no, not here, okay, what about the ground bone, ground bone, ah, look, so, this is compact bone, these are part of long bones, and this is part of flat bones. Usually in the case of long bones, we have the, uh, the whole bone is <coughs> structured with the compact bone, and at the ends of this long bone in the epiphyseal part we can identify the cancellous bone. Beside the cancellous bone is a thin layer of cancellous bone is attached to the compact bone in the middle part of the long bones. So this cancellous bone gives rise for the very uh, convenient um, uh, st location of bone marrow. So the bone marrow is allocated in the cancellous bone, in these free spaces which are identifiable there. Look, these are, this is cancellous bone. So the same, look, this is the flat bone, 
And here you can see two layers of compact bone and between them is cancellous bone. So if we magnify this image, look if it works, of course, I don't know this internet. Oh, excellent. So, what you see here, you see structural units of compact bone. Look, this round shaped structure. Look, this one, for example, that one. or this one here, and in the middle you see the Harvisian canal, and this Harvisian canal is surrounded with the layers of compact bone. Compact, uh, I magnify this image further, look, and you see here lacunae, look this not stained parts, dots, they are lacunae of osteocytes. Osteocyte which is differentiated bone cell. Beside the osteocytes in the bone tissue, in the bones, we can identify osteoprogenitor cells, osteoblast cells, osteocytes and osteoclast cells. So each of them have their own function and osteoprogenitor cells, they are derived from mesenchymal tissue and from the mesenchymal, uh, from mesenchymal cells, they undergo differentiation and form osteocyte cells. Osteoblast cells are very active cells. They are actively involved in production of extracellular matrix, collagen fibers, etc. Extracellular matrix is fully formed by the osteoblast cells. Besides, osteoblast cells are able to uh, form matrix vesicles. So these matrix vesicles contain different type of enzymes which pr provide concentration of calcium and phosphate ions in the extracellular space. Then they, they form the bone, solid bone extracellular matrix. This process is called uh, ossification or and uh, ossification includes mineralization too, of course, and calcium hydroepatite uh, um, crystals, hydroxyapatite crystals are formed in the bone tissue. About this, uh, and this everything is provided by the osteoblast cells. Osteoblast cells usually are Line, they usually line the surfaces of uh, growing bone or different forming bone tissue. Uh, how do you think is bone well vascularized or not? Yes, very well vascularized. So in this Harvisian canals, usually you can identify nerve fibers and the uh, veins and arteries. So, or arterioles. Look, the surface of the bone is covered with a periosteum, which is damaged here, not so well visible. due to the 
tissue processing. So it contains two main layers, usually perichondrium. Outer layer uh, contains a lot of uh, collagen fibers, a lot of fibers, and these fibers uh, are represented clearly here. And besides the, uh, this fiber, fibrous layer, it contains cellular layer two. So the cellular layer here contains the precursors of osteoblast cells, which are called osteoprogenitor cells. Plus, periosteum here contains also the blood vessels. And these blood vessels are able to enter the um, bone tissue and form there this highly, very intensively branched uh, vascular network. So we have there verticular, uh, verticular um, oriented uh, Harvesian canals, and we have also horizontally arranged canals via which these blood vessels are able to enter, I mean blood vessels from the periosteum to enter and invade the uh, bone tissue. So this Harvesian channels here containing blood vessels are connected with the surrounding layers of bone tissue. I want to show you another type of, uh, and one more thing, you know the um, cancellous bone, look this spicule-like structures of cancellous bone, these branches, they also are typical compact bones. Their internal structure is the same as the structure of this compact bone. But they are called cancellous bone due to their macrostructure, not microstructure not tissue content. Do you understand what I mean? Because here we have the same extracellular matrix, the same layers of the con uh, compact bone which are arranged in, uh, might be arranged uh, in ho horizontally or uh, circumferentially. However, both of them here and here is compact bone. The macrostructure of this part of the bone is called cancellous bone. Um, okay, now I want to show you another type of staining. Oh, look. So this is compact bone again. And you see here these round shaped profiles. Look, this one, for example, this one, or that one, or that one. And they are called osteons, okay? So the osteon, for example, osteon number one. I don't know which one is number one and which one is number two, but however, all they this one or that one or this one, they are osteons. And what is interesting here, how the osteocyte cells are arranged in the bone tissue. How they are able to obtain nutrients and oxygen. Because as you see here, this um, tissue, extracellular matrix, is solid. It means that where should be circulated or where should be drained 
interstitial fluid from which the bone cells became able to obtain all needed substances from their life. Look please to this image. I will magnify it. Okay. So, you see here Harvisian canal. And Harvisian canal usually contains blood vessels. Besides, you can see layers of compact bone arranged circumferentially above each other. Yes? Between these layers, you can see these dark stained profiles. Look. These profiles actually are the lacunae Look. Okay, look here. Lacunae and this in this lacunae usually reside bone cells. Bone osteocytes. What are these lines? Look, lines. Lines which interconnect which are uh, actually identifiable between in each of these uh, layer and they move further. You see that these lines connect the lacunae with each other and these lacunae are connected with these lines to the profile of Harvisian channel. So these lines actually indicate system of canaliculi. Canaliculi are small, thin uh, pipelines, you know, pipelines which interconnect Harvisian canal with the lacun lacunae. So the whole solid bone tissue is perforated with this lacunae, uh, canaliculi. Canaliculi which interconnects lacunae to each other and lacunae themselves connects with the Harvisian canals. So the interstitial fluid fills this Harvisian, if it is drained in the Harvisian canals, from Harvisian canals it moves into the canaliculi and fills this canaliculi. You know why are this canaliculi? Not only lacunae are interconnected. I mean, part, lacuna is part of extracellular matrix where usually the bone cell resides. Yes. Why are these canaliculi, these small uh, uh, pipelines, or how to say the um, tube-like structures? The osteocytes establish connection with each other, so they form quite long processes. This processes during the bone formation are surrounded with the extracellular matrix and became allocated in the canaliculi. So why are these canaliculi? The bone cell processes connect with each other. They are attached with each other. I have very good uh, micrograph in my presentation, which I can't open. Today I do not understand why. You can see the lumen of canaliculi. Usually how it looks, you know how it is arranged. So the canaliculi has 
free lumen. And this free lumen is filled with the interstitial fluid and plus it is this lumen is derived from the lacuna where the osteocyte is reside and via this uh, canaliculi osteocyte became able to grow to give rise there uh, to form the process and this process moves into this canalicula what and enters meet there with uh, uh, another osteocyte process attached with it and forms quite um, tightly interconnected cellular matrix of bone tissue so is it understandable guys I think in histology lumen it should be the uh, this image wait image of lacuna uh, canaliculi Oh, look, this one. It is small magnification, but you know what? I will copy this to presentation. Look. Somewhere here or here, it does not matter. Paste. So look, this is transmission electron microscopic image. And this image demonstrates internal content of canaliculi. What is canaliculi? Small tube-like structures which interconnect the lacunae in the bone tissue. So this is lumen, look, this is solid bone tissue, this one and that one here. This is free space, free lumen of canaliculi. And here you can identify one process of bone, uh, osteocyte and this is another process. So between them here, are established junctions and they are tightly attached to each other. So the canaliculi, they not only provide, uh, for example, the uh, interstitial fluid for t bone cells, but it also provides connections between osteocytes. So, establishment of connections. And um, look, is this image understandable? So, this is, do you remember the canaliculi, how they look like? Look, these lines. These lines are canaliculi and the canaliculi interconnect the lacunae with each other. Plus, they interconnect, they are connected with the Harvisian canal. And in this lumen of lacunae, you see on this image, and you see there the, um, you see there the um, processes, osteocyte processes, and what else?
interstitial fluid, uh, space for interstitial fluid. Okay, so um, Besides this intensive blood supply, the tissue, bone tissue as a tissue, is highly dynamic and is able to undergo changes. I mean, it undergoes very intensive remodeling during the growth. And this re in this process of remodeling, are involved osteoclast cells, osteocytes, and osteoblast cells. Maybe re you remember what type of cells are osteoclast cells. Osteoclast. Which one? So they belong to the mononuclear phagocytotic system of the cells, and this is actually the macrophage-like cell, which contains a lot of lysosomes, and via which the um, bone tissue is degraded, break down. Bone tissue actually is the main source of calcium ions in human body, so the 99 percent of calcium is stored in the uh, bone tissue. That is why immediately when the need of calcium ions exist in the body, the some small amount of uh, bone tissue is degraded by the, even by the osteocytes, you know, not only by the uh, osteoclast cells, but osteocytes are also involved in this process. <coughs> Calcium ions, as you know, are very important for different type of processes. Uh, cell signaling or, for example, the synaptic uh, transmission or uh, different type of metabolic pathways, all of them needs calcium ions. That is why calcium is number one ion needed for different type of processes and it is stored mainly in the bone tissue. So the uh, osteoclast cells, how, excuse me, how the uh, macrophages usually work? Do you remember? How? Phagocyto. Okay, so what, uh, how the, uh, for example, macrophages uh, accomplish the phagocytosis? They engulf some type of substances, usually, and then the substances or bacteria or other microorganisms, they are digested in the macrophage. How it is digested there? By the lysosomes. So what has happened, how the lysosome reach, for example, this material, which is engulfed by the macrophage? So this engulfed material is wrapped in the phagosome, yes? which is real vesicle, vesicle in the cytoplasm of the cell. Lysosome or late endosomes, they fuse with this phagosome and after this fusion, content of lysosome became activated. 
What does it mean, activated content of lysosome? It means that the hydrolases, which are represented in the lysosome, became activated. For this, it is needed low pH. How the low pH is reached in the lysosome? via the proton pump, which is allocated in the lysosomal membrane. And when the pH reached the acidic level, hydrolases became activated and start become activated and start to degrade this engulfed material. But everything this happens where in the macrophage in the cytoplasm of macrophage. In the case of osteoclast cells, the, this whole this process, I mean degradation of uh, extra bone extracellular matrix, takes place outside the osteoclast. It means that osteoclast is able to release lysosomal enzymes outside the cell. But for proper functioning of these hydrolases is needed low pH, acidic pH. So how the bone cell, osteoclast cell, is able to reach this low pH outside the cell. For that reason, the surface of the, usually the osteoclast is attached to the surface of the bone tissue. Between the osteoclast and surface of bone tissue is created sealed space. The space is sealed by the wall of, by the membrane of the osteoclast cell. And this thin space between the surface of bone tissue and outer surface of osteoclast membrane is filled step by step with the proton ions. And these proton ions form the acidic pH, lysosomes release their content outside the osteoclast cell, they became activated and start to degrade bone extracellular matrix. Is it understandable without uh, slides and without illustration. Is it clear? So, you know, in the uh, cells, usually, beneath the plasma membrane are allocated the actin microfilaments. And these actin microfilaments are called stress fibers. So when the osteoclast is activated, it becomes tightly attached to the surface of the bone. And this tight attachment is produced by the concentration of actin microfilaments close to the surface of cell plasma membrane, OK? In this thin uh, cleft between bone surface and cell are released proton ions, lysosomal ferments, lysosomal enzymes, and these lysosomal enzymes degrade bone tissue. Then the osteoclast cells reuptakes this degraded uh, material. It undergoes some type of 
modifications or breakdown in the macrophage itself, then it is really to get, because the first uh, need, the first goal of this process is uh, obtaining of calcium ions. So these calcium ions together with the other uh, materials are released in the interstitial fluid. Is it clear? Okay. In this, maybe you have questions regarding this process. I mean, breakdown of bone tissue by the osteoclast cells. As I have already told you, the bone tissue is a uh, very dynamic tissue, and bone tissue is formed uh, from the um, hyaline, from the uh, cartilage uh, in during the embryogenesis, but beside the cartilage, it is directly formed from the mesenchymal tissue too. That is why we have two main type of bone formation processes of bone osteogenesis. So one of them is um, the osteogenesis, intramembranous osteogenesis, and another one is endochondrial osteogenesis. So the main features of these uh, processes is that the, uh, for example, in the case of first one, I mean intramembranous acidification, the mesenchymal tissue forms the membranose-like structure due to the very compact condensation of connective tissue. And in this membran membranose-like structure, the cells of connective tissue, I mean mesenchymal tissue, start to differentiate and form osteoprogenitor cells. Osteoprogenitor cells give rise to the osteoblast cells, and osteoblast cells finally form osteocytes. Regarding the osteoclast cells, they, are do, they do not derive from the mesenchymal cells. They usually are differentiated from the monocyte precursor cells. The cells fuse each other and form quite big multinuclear osteoclast cell. I will go back to this image which is well known for you. I mean this Face forming, and on this section you can see both type of processes of bone formation. I mean the, I mean the uh, intramembranous ossification, which takes place here, for example, in the mandible and in maxilla and also in flat frontal bone here. And plus you can see here also the endochondrial ossification. So in the endochondrial ossification, first the cartilage model of future bone is formed, and then step by step this cartilage model of future bone undergoes ossification. Look here. You can see a lot of 
mesenchymal cells. These mesenchymal cells condense and form this layer of tightly packed mesenchymal tissue. Look this one. In this mesenchymal tissue, then, mesenchymal cells form the osteoprogenitor cells. And these osteoprogenitor cells then give rise to the osteoblast cells. Look. This is small fragment of differentiated bone. Look, these pink stained islands are islands of the bone tissue which undergoes ossification process. Okay. So, unfortunately, I can't show you any other images. I will resend you another version of the presentation. And uh, on Friday, we have the tutorial. Friday, 11. So, we will... Uh, discuss the bone tissue again, okay?